الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters we have commenced the new year 1442. We are in the month of Muharram, which is the first month of the Islamic calendar. It is a month, the name of which is very clear. It has to do with something haram, something prohibited. So what is haram and why is this month called Muharram? Let's take a look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. إن عدة الشهور عند الله اثنا عشر شهرا في كتاب الله يوم خلق السماوات والأرض منها أربعة حرم Indeed, the number of months in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is 12, the day that He created the heavens and the earth. From among them, there are four that are haram. Haram meaning prohibited. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, explains that the prohibition of commencing war, the prohibition of killing things, of causing harm, destruction, etc. These are sacred months. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. So if someone were to attack you, during the months that are known as Al-Hurum. And one might ask, well, what are the other three? Muharram is one of them. Rajab is another one of them. And then you have Dhul Qi'dah and Dhul Hijjah, which are the two months preceding Muharram. So if someone were to attack you during those months, you're allowed to defend yourself and to attack back. But you're not allowed to commence any form of disturbance or warfare be alert and be awake more than other months make sure that you are at peace not only with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but even with others and make sure you go out of your way to achieve that may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy similarly in this month which is the first of the islamic calendar people generally look at resolutions and they ask themselves, what should I be doing? It's the new year, it's the end of the previous year, etc. My brothers and sisters, as Muslims, we're supposed to be making resolutions every night. We're supposed to be renewing our vows to with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every night. We're supposed to be seeking forgiveness every night. We're taught to make sure when we go to bed, we make peace with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a supplication that you and I are supposed to be reading before going to bed every night. And part of it is that, oh Allah, if you take my soul away in my sleep, then have mercy on it. And if you send it back, then, meaning if you allow me to awaken in the morning, then protect me in the same way that you protect the pious friends of yours or the pious slaves of yours. From this supplication, we do recognize and we should be recognizing that we have no guarantee of waking up the following morning. We should be making peace with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single day. Seek forgiveness. Promise Allah you're going to be a better person. Never give up. If you've fallen into sin again and again, you need to go back to Allah again and again and again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a beautiful returning to Him. So people sometimes only specify resolutions for the end of the year. That's not something that should be once a year. It should be, as I explained, very often. Similarly, we also need to understand that the years are clicking. They are clicking away. They are ticking away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. We're becoming closer to the day we're going to be meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we say 1442, yes, we're excited that the years are passing. But we should also be equally concerned, if not more, about what we have done to present to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the day that He takes us away. What have I done? What have you done? 
to present to Allah. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad. O you who believe, be conscious of the Almighty, develop the correct relationship with Allah. And each one of you should be looking into what you have prepared to hand in tomorrow. Subhanallah. Tomorrow meaning when you meet with Allah, what are you going to give him? All your deeds you've done. Good news to those who are going to give a lot of istighfar or repentance or tawbah, turning back to Allah, seeking forgiveness from Allah. If you have a lot of that on your slate and you're going to be presenting that to Allah, good news to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and grant us goodness. My brothers and sisters, the month of Muharram, yes, as much as it is the first month of the Islamic calendar, we need to realize it has a certain value. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, towards the end of his life, used to fast a lot in the month of Muharram. So while we do have the fasting of the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, which were the first 10 days, which we spoke about in the past, we do have the compulsory fasting of Ramadan. The Dhul Hijjah fasts are not compulsory, but they hold great value. The fast of Arafah holds great value. And the fasts of Muharram also hold great value with the 10th of Muharram being the peak of these fasts. Subhanallah. So what exactly happened on the 10th of Muharram? When the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina Munawwara, he found that the Jewish community used to fast on the 10th of Muharram. And when he inquired about it, he was told, this is the day that the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, was saved from the Pharaoh. The day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the Pharaoh to die. If you take a look at that, my brothers and sisters, it was something very interesting. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, made a comment immediately. He says, we should be following or we should be more happy about the saving of the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, than the Jews. Subhanallah, he's obviously a prophet of Islam and he's obviously one of the great five prophets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran. And he says we should be fasting as well. And in order to be slightly different, we're encouraged to fast two days, the ninth and the tenth. So the tenth holds great value. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says whoever fasts on the tenth, perhaps their sins of this year would be forgiven, which means the previous year. The sins of the previous year would be forgiven. Here, referring to the minor sins, they are forgiven. So let's try our best to fast on the 10th and to add the 9th in order to be slightly different. So the 10th, yes, we should be fasting. The 9th, we should add it because that was the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If for some reason you can only fast the 10th, it's fine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to fast both on the 9th and the 10th. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for every single one of us. However, this depicts the victory of the oppressed over the oppressor. It also depicts the defeat of the oppressor no matter how powerful he thinks he is. So we should be pondering for a moment and we should be thanking Allah and we should have hope in Allah. If someone has wronged you, they've oppressed you, they've blackmailed you, they've done something, they've usurped your wealth, they keep on harassing you, whatever else they may be doing, remember triumph will come. Remember they will be defeated. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not oblivious of what is happening. He knows and he is going to deal with the matter decisively. Musa alayhi salam, the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, and his people struggled for a long time. But a day came when, much to their disbelief, the Pharaoh was defeated. And he was defeated by water. Subhanallah, Allah used water to drown him. And he was so strong, so powerful, yet he was defeated. So those who are oppressed, don't worry. The day will come. And it is coming and it's very near when you will see victory by the will of Allah. Keep going. Don't give up. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. 
Those who are oppressors, if you are harming others, you're not going to get away with it. You need to seek forgiveness and make amends before a day comes similar to the day of Fir'aun, the day of Qarun, the day of Haman, and the day of Ubay ibn Khalaf. Those were the people who thought they would never ever see any bad day, difficult day, or a day of punishment, but they were punished in such a way that their examples are given to this day. So remember, make amends. If you are doing wrong to someone, whether it is in your family, whether it is your circle of friends, whether it is your circle of acquaintances, or just a strange person, no matter what it is, if you are doing wrong, remember, you may get away for a little while, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is definitely not oblivious of it. He is going to come and give triumph to those whom you have oppressed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us triumph over the oppressor. May Allah defeat the oppressor. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant goodness to all those who are struggling across the globe. So it is the season of triumph over the oppressor. Don't lose hope, my brothers and sisters. And let's fast in order to celebrate, in order to celebrate the successes that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about. My brothers and sisters, there is another incident that occurred later on 50 years after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wherein the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was martyred on this day as well. And we are saddened by that. We do believe it was a disaster. It was something that should never have happened. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every time we say his name, we actually say sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and his entire family, his household, his companions. And we're including Al Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu anhu. Anhuma. Actually, he is the son of one of the greatest of the Khalifs, one of the four Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, radiallahu anhum. May Allah be pleased with them. So what do we learn from this? Firstly, we learn that sometimes hypocrites make us fight amongst each other and we're not supposed to be. People sometimes continue to fight amongst each other as Muslims. We are saying the shahada. We repeat, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. But we fight each other. We're actually learning nothing from what happened with Al Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu anhuma. We learn nothing about from what happened on the tenth of Muharram. We learn nothing from what happened in our history. How the hypocrites made us fight and kill each other in the past. We should not do that, my brothers and sisters. If anything, the lesson is to make peace, to make peace, to be able to respect one another, to be able to understand one another, to be able to teach one another with goodness. That is a powerful lesson. So yes, we are saddened by what happened. Although the 10th of Muharram primarily is connected to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to us and what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us regarding the saving of the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, we do take lesson by what happened thereafter. And we, we do understand the sadness that every one of us should be feeling when we read the history of such incidents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never let them repeat. But my brothers and sisters, the sad reality upon, on the globe today is we need a lot of correction, a lot of help in this regard. We really need to understand each other better. We really need to know how to navigate through our differences of opinion. We need to know that difference of opinion does not necessarily mean that someone is your enemy. We need to understand how to reach out to people with knowledge, with education. And we need to realize that guidance is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah guide every one of us. Some people believe that we're not allowed to get married in the month of Muharram because it is bad luck. Unfortunately, that is totally baseless. Some people believe we're not allowed to wear any good clothing, which is also baseless. And some people believe the opposite, saying that we're supposed to be celebrating to the degree that we should be uh, partying and so on on this day. That is also baseless, but rather it is more about the lesson. 
It is more about the lessons that we should be learning. And yes, we are happy about the victory on one hand of Musa alayhi salam. And at the same time, we should be learning lessons from what happened, like I said earlier. So my brothers and sisters, remember, when it comes to marriage, we should not delay it. There is no month in the Islamic calendar wherein it is wrong or taboo to get married or there will be bad luck and so on. All those are actually statements of ignorance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good guidance. So whether you marry in Muharram or Safar or Rabi al Awwal or Ramadan or Dhul Qi'da or Dhul Hijjah, my brothers and sisters, all those months are good for you to get married in and for a nikah to happen. Don't delay the nikah. You don't know what tomorrow holds. So fulfill that act of worship today or as soon as possible. Those who delay nikah unnecessarily are responsible in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for encouraging that which is immoral directly or indirectly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So my brothers and sisters, some people don't realize that in the month of Muharram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained certain things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen the month of Muharram for certain things. He calls it Shahrullahi al-Muharram. In fact, it is called Shahrullahi al-Muharram. I cannot think of where Allah himself calls it Shahrullahi, but they say it is the month of Allah al-Muharram. Why do they say it's the month of Allah? The best explanation is simple that it is the month from among the four that are haram. And I've explained that already. It is prohibited to commence warfare during these months. And then there is another explanation that is probably not the most authentic, but it is there to say the names of the months were all unchanged in Islam, except the month of Muharram. It had a different name. According to some narrations, it used to be called Safar al awwal And the, the Safar that we know today was called Safar Al-Thani. And then when the months or when Islam came, it gave it the month Muharram. Subhanallah, Muharram. So that could be also one of the reasons. But it's very interesting to note that all the other months were already named prior to Islam, including Ramadan. It was called Ramadan and it was named after the severe heat, the intense heat. Dhul Hijjah was also named Dhul Hijjah before Islam because people used to make Hajj during that time, but a slightly different type of Hajj. And later on, it became filled with paganism. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection and a good understanding. So my brothers and sisters, I encourage you to fast during this month, more so on the 10th of Muharram. Try not to miss that. It's actually a very powerful fast. It would expiate the sins, the minor sins of the previous year. Remember to add to it the 9th at least. And then we have the Sunnah of fasting every Monday and Thursday. And then we have the Sunnah of fasting on the 13th, 14th and 15th of the lunar calendar. And all that would bring about a lot of goodness and a lot of reward. I want to end by saying, my brothers and sisters, let's make resolutions on a daily basis. And let's look into the resolutions we've made and see how best we're practicing upon them. Let's see how best we're actually fulfilling them. Remember, if you have bad habits, this is the time to quit those bad habits. Looking at the coronavirus, many people said those who have not given up their habits of smoking, be it shisha, be it anything else. Those who had habits, astaghfirullah, that may have been totally haram, such as alcohol and, and consumption of intoxicants and drugs and so on. They were more prone and are more prone to struggle and suffer more with this disease. Many have actually lost their lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to take our health seriously and not for granted. And we need to make resolutions. The beauty of these resolutions in Islam, the ones connected to your health, you would get a reward and at the same time you would earn good health. So if you're making a resolution, I'm going to take care of my body this time. Wallahi, that body was given to you by Allah and it's going to be taken away. So if you're looking after something Allah has entrusted you with for a while, you would be earning a reward for it. 
So let's go for it. My brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. So we take that seriously. Those of us who have bad habits, we should be quitting them. Those of us who are weak in fulfilling our duties, be strong. This could be your last year. You may not see the end of the year. Subhanallah. So let's be strong in our obligations. What are the obligations? Well, primarily to worship Allah alone, to follow in the footsteps of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have the five daily prayers we need to be very strong with. We have the modesty in our dress. We need to keep improving. Don't go backwards. Go forward. Don't go backwards. Go forward. If Allah has blessed you to be able to cover modestly, cover more modestly as time passes. Don't start covering in an Im, meaning immodestly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. It's something we need to remind ourselves. We need to remind each other about male and female. And then we have those who need to fulfill their duties unto Allah. You know, fasting in the month of Ramadan, if you've been weak, wallahi, that is a serious one. We need to make sure we strengthen ourselves. Those who have not been paying their zakah correctly, may Allah strengthen everyone. Those who haven't been for Hajj and yet they can afford the trip and they are supposed to be going. Make your intentions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us in his obedience in this world and may he gather us in the companionship of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hereafter. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.